I'm joined today by someone who needs absolutely no introduction, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the chief medical advisor to President Biden. Dr. Fauci, thank you so much for making the time to inform our viewers today. Thank you for having me. So I'd like to start with a question specific to our state. Michigan, as you know, is experiencing, a, is experiencing a significant new wave in cases, despite having a mask mandate in place and capacity limits in place. Meanwhile, there are other parts of the country, many that have far fewer restrictions. They are not experiencing the same degree of increase. Can I ask you your thoughts on why Michigan seems to be doing so much worse right now compared to other states? You know, we don't have a precise answer to that question. It's very likely a couple of things together. We're having a dominant um, a variant now that's circulating, the 117, which originated in the UK. It has a greater capability of transmitting from person to person. We know that. So I'm certain that this is having an impact in Michigan. Also, even though you still have a mass mandate on and you have not pulled back on some of the restrictions, that you know th there is a feeling, understandably, throughout the country, and I'm sure in Michigan, of what we call COVID-19 fatigue, where, where people just are so worn out from now close to 15 months of this really strain on us all that they are not abiding by the recommendations. And, and you, you don't wanna blame people for that because you can understand completely how they feel. But I think it's a combination of not adhering to the public health measures together with this variant now that has a greater capability of efficiently transmitting from person to person. Sure. So, you know, one of the things that many viewers have focused on, and I usually answer their questions on air, is what they can change about their daily lives once they're fully vaccinated. So I'm curious, what, if anything, you might have changed about your daily life since you became vaccinated? Well, one of the things, you know, the, the CDC is coming out progressively with various installments of things you can do uh, with regard to personal interactions in the home, on the outside. And you're going to be hearing literally as the weeks and months go by recommendations of what vaccinated people can do regarding the workplace, regarding places of worship and regarding travel. Like right now, what they say we can do and I'm doing that is that if you are in a home setting with vaccinated people or even with people who are not unvaccinated, who are unvaccinated, that as long as they are not in a category of having a higher risk of having a severe event, namely having an underlying condition, you can interact without masks, you can have physical context. You know, the thing people ask is a grandmother who's vaccinated, can she visit her daughter and her granddaughter? And the right. answer is now, yes, because if you are vaccinated, as long as your daughter and granddaughter don't have an underlying condition, that might put them at a higher risk of a severe event. You can visit them in the home setting. You can take your mask off. You can give them a big hug and a kiss. All the things that we weren't sure of. But as, as I mentioned, as the weeks and months go by and more and more people get vaccinated, you're going to see a less a loosening of some of those restrictions. So you need to stay tuned for the announcements from the CDC because they will be forthcoming. Sure. Okay. That's terrific. And I, I, I imagine you're seeing your family now, right? Well, you know, my, my three daughters are scattered throughout the country. They have been vaccinated. Uh, they're in uh, situations, professions which get vaccinated. So even though they're young in their late 20s and early 30s, they're vaccinated. So I just am you know, looking forward to getting them to come and visit us because we haven't really physically seen two yeah. or three of them literally in a year, which is terrible. Yeah. Well, it's hard on all families. And, you know, as a segue, I guess you talked about pandemic fatigue earlier. It's a real thing. And right now, what I think we're noticing is that the governmental resolve to impose restrictions on activities and enforce mask use is frankly decreasing in many states. And not all Americans, as we know, are on board with voluntary public health measures. So what are your thoughts on America's ability to really kind of vaccinate our way out of another wave of the pandemic at this point? You know, I think we're gonna be able to do that. Every day we vaccinate about 3 million people. So every day we get closer and closer to having a broader umbrella of protection. So you kind of think of it metaphorically as a race between a surging virus and our ability to vaccinate as many people as quickly as we possibly can, and which is one of the reasons why 
we're really putting on, you know, a full court press to get people to get vaccinated. Just yesterday, they announced this community core, which is an, an organization now of multiple, multiple public and private organizations that get what's called trusted messengers to get information, to get people to understand why it's so important. And trusted messengers are anyone from church leaders to celebrities to sports figures, people that are trusted by the community to get them out there to get people vaccinated. Because it, indeed, it is a, a, a race between the vaccine and the surging virus. At what point do you think we're going to pull ahead? I mean, we maybe we haven't made one of the turns just yet. Yeah. You know, I think it's coming soon because, you know, as we're now into April, we're going to get a lot more vaccine that's going to be available for distribution. Every day that goes by, we get closer and closer to that goal of getting as many people as we possibly can vaccinated.